So it's the interfaith unity, if you will, the interfaith harmony uh, uh, week. Um, peace is, uh, is what the world needs today. It is the answer for, for, for all the, the, the violence. The dialogue is very important because there is misunderstanding, right? No more war, no more religious division. My father was a uh, Korean Presbyterian minister. I am now converted to Judaism. My sister married into a Muslim family, and all the religions in my personal family get together, and we, we discovered that we're all the same, and we love each other, and I believe that the world can do the same. We feel that we are becoming closer. Uh, the advancement of telecommunication make us closer. But at the same time, we feel that we are even divided more. I want you all to know that no matter what you go through, even in your hardest days, never to give up. There'll be a better tomorrow. There'll be a better tomorrow. The theme of our forum, Building Bridges Across Boundaries, is to underscore the con connection between interfaith harmony and the 20th, 2030 United Nations Agenda on Sustained Development Goals, as well as tackling of the global health issues such as Ebola. Two nonprofit organizations, the United African Congress, represented by its national chairman Mohammed Nur Hussein, and President Sadiq Wai, and Give Them a Hand Foundation with its chairman and founder Gordon Tapper, are partners in the Building Bridges Across Boundaries Initiative. The program has three pillars promoting interfaith harmony, sustainable development through the new United Nations 2030 agenda, and global health with particular emphasis on recovery from Ebola. This forum in 2016 was the partner's fourth celebration of World Interfaith Harmony Week, established by a United Nations General Assembly resolution. The organization gave them a hand to share our hands in this right moment, just one second all together, are we? UN ambassadors, representatives of religious organizations, NGOs and civil society, healthcare professionals, and honored guests filled the chamber of the UN's Economic and Social Council for presentations and a panel discussion. I am the chief chaplain of the New York City Police Department, and quite frankly, the New York City Police Department is as diverse as this gathering. We have. We have people of every race, religion, color, and creed conceivable in the ranks of our police department. Our members speak all of the various languages that are spoken here. And most extraordinarily, they get along magnificently. It is only when we stop othering the other, then we can begin to build any bridges and break down boundaries. And when we do this, uh, by beginning to see the other as ourselves. Today. So we have to understand then that we have one mother. We all co-equally have a right to those resources. Not some corporations, not some governments, but we the people. Representatives of sponsoring UN missions made statements. We stand to ensure that the noble and shared ideals of peace, of human development and well-being, of fulfilling humanity's potential, of safeguarding the earth as a home for our peoples. We in Ethiopia fully subscribe to the ideals and principles espoused by the World Interface Harmony Week. This is because we have a country of more than 90 million people with diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds. It has therefore become more important to observe the Interfaith Harmony as an embodiment of 
the cooperation between government and civil society, as well as a practical example of the collective efforts to nurture tolerance and respect between the followers of different religious faith and beliefs. In his plenary speech, UN Assistant Secretary General Thomas Gass explained the relationship between the UN's new global agenda and interfaith harmony. Ladies and gentlemen, the 17 goals, whether to tackle hunger and poverty, inequality, and the impact of climate change, or to make cities safe and promote safe drinking water, no, no religious barrier. UN ambassadors noted the event's uh, value. The reason that the government of Benin attaches great importance uh, to uh, the concept of interfaith harmony and has recently undertaken concrete action in order to bring a meaningful contribution to fostering it on the African continent. In the sustainable development, we've been talking about boundaries, uh, geographical, economical, ideology, education level. I would like for us at this session to think about the boundaries of the heart and how can we make bridges across those boundaries. And I will want to congratulate the organizers of this event and encourage them to organize more events of this kind. I think this is a wonderful attempt. Uh, I will paraphrase Dr. Martin Luther King when he said that we try to bring the jungle in this court in a beautiful uh, symphony of love and understanding. Using ethnicity, using religion is just uh, something we should condemn as just Logical, uh, logical sense of it. So I'm really thank you for leading in such a diverse group. I can recognize the African continent because we are in diversity. Other partners in the initiative include Imam Shamsi Ali, president of the New Santara Foundation, and Venerable Yu Wang of Buddha's Light International Association. Partner Dr. Judy Kuriansky, the main UN NGO representative of the International Association of Applied Psychology, had been on a mission to help in West okay, Africa during Ebola, given that global health is a third pillar of the initiative. I hope my children can um, help situations like the Ebola crisis, like uh, the current, is it the Zika? Um, uh, the Zika, uh, that that crisis now that is coming, that's part of now their generation. And each time you turn around, there's something new. And if we have people like the folks that are here today, um, I think uh, there can be world peace. I find it very important that we connect. And also with the Ebola and all of that was going on, we need to come together as a community of faith leaders. I mean, the agenda is clearly something that is necessary, particularly around the issue of Ebola. The Partners 2014 event for World Interfaith Harmony Week celebrated Nelson Mandela. As Mandela said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. It is this natural human trait that we would like to cultivate in the everyday interaction among peoples of all ethnicities and faiths around the world. This iconic figure who belonged as much to Africa and the world in general as he did to South Africa, his native land, was the embodiment of tolerance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. And so that we can really talk about love and about the ability to change the minds of those who would hate and oppress others. And with that, we will go to the, the brief uh, prayers by the representative of each faith. Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarva Karyeshu Sarvada Ma Sat Gamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 we ask, Holy Spirit, that you breathe afresh on us. Give us creative ideas. Give us peace. Teach us how to forgive. 
each other. Most of all, let your love be seen in us and among us. I give you greetings of peace and harmony. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be upon you all. I say prayer which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book, Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmah. Wahayi ilana min amrina rashada. Wahayi ilana min amra rashada. Sibay xi she pian fa jie. Xi fu jie yuan li ren tian. Chan jing jie hen ping den ren. Chan kui gang en da yuan xin. Bless the good people here today with strength, courage, and wisdom to bring people of different faiths, cultures, and religions together in our collective mission of achieving universal peace, holiness, and harmony. Such dialogues are so important. Keeps us constantly reminding that we're all one. The Building Bridges Across Boundaries initiative was launched at the famed Friars Club in New York City. Very ceremonial. I think my rapture is a lot better than my rapture. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Ambassador Cindy Antonia, recipient of our first Building Bridges Across Boundaries Award. New York, the 2015 United National Congress and Gift of Land Foundation. I take great pleasure. Wow. I think humanity has no boundaries. to the diaspora and to the arts and to Building Bridges, the first Building Bridges Across Boundaries Award uh, to the Chargé d'Affaires, a lovely woman. It's an honor for me to fill in for uh, my ambassador, Mr. Anatolio Nomba, uh, from the mission of Ego Tornolini. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today because um, he's away on the meeting. So building back better, I think you all know, is the phrase that is used for building back for the countries of West Africa. And it is very important and appropriate, therefore, that building bridges across boundaries is the uh, theme of the first award today and of the initiative going forward. Many notaries attended, including former New York City Commissioner for Human Rights Patricia Gatling, founder and executive director of the Cultural Museum of African Art Eric Edwards, Dr. Edmund Bork, distinguished teaching professor and chairman emeritus in the Department of Medicine at SUNY Downstate, Gary Schultz, board member of the National Peace Corps and trustee of the United African Congress, and Milton Alamadi, founder and publisher of Black Star News. We are developing a program 
um, which we will launch in 2017. Um, it will be a million immigrant um, march from Manhattan into, into Brooklyn to, to raise um, awareness about the plight of immigrants. I'm an optimist. Everybody cross the world.